seen a string of lawsuits targeting the fossil fuel companies. Some of the plaintiffs making the argument that was so successful in suits against the tobacco industry, basically that the companies knew the threat posed by their products, but misled the public and that there was that there was no cause for alarm. I don't believe that nicotine or our products are addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. Four years after tobacco executives went before Congress and claimed absurdly that their products were not addictive, the nation's largest tobacco companies agreed to pay hundreds of billions of dollars to help pay for the damage their products had caused. Now, a similar reckoning may be coming for the nation's fossil fuel companies. Believe it or not, the biggest oil company in the world was once a leader in climate research. In the 1970s and 1980s, Exxon had top scientists studying the possible effects of climate change. It even modeled its research division on Bell Labs. The research into climate change was not something in some remote corner of Exxon. It went from Exxon scientists at the mid-level all the way up to Exxon's top management. The company was aware of the scope of the problem it faced. One internal 1979 memo warned that present trends of fossil fuel combustion with a coal emphasis will lead to dramatic world climate changes within the next 75 years. And that CO2 buildup in the atmosphere is a worldwide problem. But then something shifted in the late 1980s when the public began taking climate change more seriously. Some experts are saying now that the whole world is heating up because of a global greenhouse effect. The problems unaddressed have the potential for turning the world into a form of chaos not greatly different from that produced by global war. That's when Exxon's public posture changed. Exxon started to recognize that the U.N. and others were going to come up with um, maybe a global policy to cut back on greenhouse gas emissions, and it was going to affect their bottom line. This wasn't a remote issue anymore. It was something that they needed to address now, and they chose to address it by, um, by playing up the uncertainty and using a narrative that went counter to science. Exxon started spending tens of millions of dollars to manufacture doubt about climate change. The company financing advertisements designed to look like editorials and fringe research all meant to question the growing scientific consensus. The scientific evidence remains inconclusive as to whether human activities affect the global climate. Many scientists agree there's ample time to better understand climate system, systems and consider policy options. So there's simply no reason to take drastic action now. Thanks in no small part to Exxon's efforts, U.S. lawmakers did not take serious action to fight climate change. And by the year 2010, nearly half of Americans believe the threat of global warming was exaggerated. Now, a string of lawsuits is seeking to hold Exxon and other companies responsible. Last year, crab fishermen on the West Coast sued, seeking compensation for damage to crab populations caused by warming oceans. More than a dozen cities and counties have filed lawsuits, seeking billions to offset the costs of mitigating climate change. And three states launched investigations into Exxon and other oil companies, with New York and Rhode Island filing suit last year. As the court battles have ramped up, a warming world has been left to wonder what might have been. What if Exxon had continued down the path of accepting climate change, being a good faith actor in all of this, working with the government? Where would we be right now if the biggest oil company in the world, a leader in industry, had done that? And so that's the question, right? Where would we be right now?